How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video I'm going to be ranking the top five players at each position in MLB The Show 22. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Now to start this video off I wanted to talk about some adjustments I've made to a few investments recently. Uh, I have talked about purchasing some of the home run derby middle tier players and I have recently kind of transitioned away from that investment just because I wanted to purchase more of a no risk investment which are these uh, Clayton Kershaw's and Emmanuel Classes at 10,000 stubs. We also have this catcher's mask and this batting glove that I have purchased well over 100 of them just because those are two of the better equipment items at those respective slots. And after this program is over, I do expect those cards to go up significantly in price, potentially uh, more of a long-term investment, but I could always quick sell those cards anytime I need the stubs back. But let's go ahead and get into the ranking, the top five players at each position. Coming in at number five in terms of catchers, we have Gary Carter. I still think that card is pretty usable. Uh, even with the lower contact versus right, he has a great swing. Uh, ahead of him at number four, we have Alejandro Kirk. And this card's very similar to Joe Maurer. I have Wilson Contreras ahead of Alejandro Kirk, even though um, I would say Kirk is more of a well-rounded, balanced player. Wilson Contreras also has the pop time quirk, which helps th him throw out the base runners trying to steal. At number two, we have Joe Maurer. I think this card could also be number one, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, number two and number one in Mike Napoli are very similar cards, right? Napoli kind of has those reverse splits. He plays better against righties. Uh, he also has silver defense in comparison to Joe Maurer's diamond defense, but I think he gets the job done. And in my opinion, I think he's the best all-around catcher. Uh, top five first baseman at number five we have the free Miguel Cabrera I think this card has a lot of value also because he plays third base you could probably plug him in at that position but in terms of a free card he has a great swing and really balanced attributes against both sides at number four we have Carlos Delgado if you're looking for a lefty and you maybe don't have some of these other guys at the top of this list Carlos Delgado has dropped down in price significantly definitely a good option there at number three, we have Frank Thomas. Some people might have this card ranked at number one. I personally think there are a couple better first basemen. In number two, David Ortiz. This is kind of a left-handed hitting Frank Thomas. I personally like his swing a little bit more than I than I do in Frank. Uh, but at number one, we have Babe Ruth. And this card could also be ranked somewhere in the outfield, right? This card has a little bit of versatility. I think he has the best swing in terms of first baseman. And I've always liked Babe Ruth. That is definitely a bias pick there. Babe Ruth is always one of my favorite cards. And now we have the top five second baseman. I've actually kind of included an extra player in this list. At number six, we have Andres Jimenez. And I think this guy has a lot of value at second base. He does have a couple secondary positions. I kind of went with a slightly different approach this time. I was plugging in some of these players uh, second and third time at different positions depending on where they play. I did not do that this time around. The only player that has that exception is Alfonso Soriano. I think this card has a lot of value at second base being you know, a versatile power hitter with great speed. Uh, Cattell Marte is in his secondary position. You could put this card in the top five at every single one of his positions. I really think he's one of the best cards in the entire game. But I do know that other people might prefer Chase Sutley or potentially Jackie Robinson at second base. Both of these cards are going to be really good there. Obviously, you could use Jackie at a secondary position if you want Chase Sutley in there. You could really use all three of those guys. Cattell Marte, Chase Sutley, Jackie Robinson. There you have a switch hitter, a lefty, and a righty. And uh, your infield is pretty much set. Up next, we have the top five shortstops at number five. Corey Seager might be kind of an interesting pick. Does have the lowest contact attribute, I'm pretty sure, out of anybody on this list. Uh, but at number five, he does bring a lot of power. He's got a lot of great active quirks. And you might even have him ranked above the Xander Bogarts. I would personally rather use Corey Seager over Xander. But that Xander is really good. I, I have to rank him ahead of Corey Seager. Bryson Stott at number three. I think that's kind of an interesting pick. Uh, we could also put Cattell Marte on this list, of course. At number two, we have Tim Anderson. I think this card is uh, underrated in terms of the brand new all-star game players in the program. At number one, Dansby Swanson. This card is definitely hyped up. A lot of people know about that Dansby Swanson card. And in my opinion, is the best real player you can use at shortstop right now. 
Um, but the created player is probably the best player at any of these positions. As we get into uh, third baseman here, Miguel Cabrera on the list once again. He is a free card. I think he deserves to be on the list uh, for both first base and third base. I would maybe use Manny Machado over him at third base. I wouldn't use Manny Machado at first base, though. You're kind of, in a lot of ways, wasting his defense over there. Um, but at number three, we have Brett Beatty. You could also plug that card in the outfield. He's really good. At number two, I left him off of the previous list in Rafael Devers. This card should have been number two last ranking list, and he remains at the number two spot this time around. At number one, we obviously have George Brett. You could, of course, put this card at first base too, but I think you're wasting his defense at first base if you decide to do that. Uh, the top five outfielders at number seven. So we have a couple extra players in Jason Dominguez. I think this card could honestly be ranked a little higher depending on whether you prefer a switch hitter or a lefty or righty, uh, depending on what you're looking for. But at number six, we have Alfonso Soriano. And the reason why I have this card twice is because that card is elite. If you like his swing, he is definitely a top five player at respective positions. At number five, we have Bryce Harper. And at number four, we have Julio Rodriguez. I want to say you could use Bryce Harper, Julio Rodriguez, and maybe another one of these all-star game players in the outfield and be just fine. Uh, but I have to go with Roberto Clemente at number three, Juan Soto at number two. Maybe you flip-flop Juan Soto and Bryce Harper, depending on how much you value defense. Uh, they're both left-handed. They both kill the baseball. And at number one, we have Julio Rodriguez. Kind of an interesting pick there. Uh, but that card has played really well for me defensively. And I think you almost have to have a Julio Rodriguez card in your lineup at this moment. In terms of starting pitchers, at number six, we have Aaron Ashby. You might flip-flop this card and Bob Feller. Just because um, lefty or righty, one of them has more control. One of them is more of a power pitcher, but they both have outlier. Uh, Sandy Alcantara at number four. I think that card kind of speaks for himself. I like Corbin Burns' repertoire a little bit more, so that's why I put him at number three. Nolan Ryan does not really have um, the meta type of pitches. He doesn't have a slider. He doesn't have something with um, movement side to side. Okay, so I would say he's at number two. I think Randy Johnson is by far the best pitcher in the game, way above everybody else. And could be, you know, arguably the most dominant pitcher we've ever seen in the history of MLB The Show. Uh, for relief pitchers, we have Joe Mantiply at number five. I think this card could use a slider, right? That lateral movement, side-to-side -side movement. Gregory Soto does have that slider and a sinker. He'll throw a little bit harder, but he won't be able to locate as well, obviously. Um, at number three, kind of an interesting pick. 87 overall, Yoan Duran. This card is absolutely cracked. He's insane. Uh, he has a 95 mile per hour splitter and he throws 102 with a great cutter. Can't go wrong with him. At number two, who was previously number one, Steve Ciszek. And now Raleigh Fingers has taken that number one spot. I think he's the best reliever in the game with Steve Ciszek right before him. But that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you think about my top five players at each position. And I wanted to add in a couple of guys like I had mentioned. Um, I do have you know some personal preferences in here and you might as well. So let me know what you agree with. Let me know what you disagree with. It's not going to upset me. I'm just kind of looking at the comments and seeing what people like. Until next time, peace out.